We were listening but couldn't hear. Silence choked the scattered air. The shooting hadn't been more than minutes, but it felt like hours to some, and for others like centuries of near-death anxiety finally near enough to feel it rattle our bone-caged hearts. Everyone knows that time slows down in the mire of misery and speeds through fleeting pleasure. But when pressed too hard down, <coughs> when crushed as enduring trauma, time spirals out in countless waves made be felt later. When we don't die but are near, death gathers masks and makes to come find us later. When it seemed over, when it seemed safe enough, Everyone got off the ground and hurried toward exits. Once it was not loud with screams or breathing, no one asking me more where the shooter was, asking now instead, what happened, what did we do? The, award, the authorities arrived and scrambled to make things seem taken care of. Some people stuck around and hugged, held hugs long enough to make them something else, grasping for rootedness. Some were just grateful to be alive. Others looked around distrustfully at everyone, made their way to their cars or for public transportation. The seagulls who have really cleaned up given how much food had been dropped and abandoned after the shots were fired were nowhere to be seen. Almost unnoticeable small birds flitted between seats and bleachers, beak and specks, jumped flew to new areas in a hurry. Afraid maybe for the return of the seagulls, or about anyone coming. The small birds are one to have worried heads, darting eyes. The birds were dirt brown and spotted, not beautiful. For these birds, the loud sound of the day was not as much, not that much different from the rest of their days. This one came with an aftermath. The word aftermath comes from an old English farming term referring to grass grown directly after a harvest. It felt like that after everything stopped. The powwow, the dancing, the drumming, the droning, powwow MC, the singing, the shooting. When it all stopped and everyone got up, started moving, kept moving. That weed stayed alive, this too was growth. After one of the worst kinds of harvests, the reaping of unknown seeds grown. Because even though it was maybe an unintentional taking of lives, life taken in any form, it's life taken and life lost. And those who lose, if they can keep moving, not die themselves of grief or of shock, this is growth. Even just withstanding something unbearable, even if that just means giving up, not shrinking or dying, is growing if it's away from death. <clears throat> Orville didn't end up remembering anything after the bullet first hit him. Somewhere in him, remote, called or spelled him away. He went to the place people go when they lose consciousness. Wherever we go to get lost, to be gone, until it's okay to come back. To not die or sleep or dream or impose. Orville doesn't remember anything until he woke up with his brothers sitting around him playing dominoes with Jackie Wright the other ground. What was she doing there? He hadn't seen her in so long he thought it was a dream. He thought maybe everything had been dreamed since the last time he'd seen Jackie, back when their mom was still alive, that he dreamed of the power. But then what they, were they all doing there in the hospital together? He closed his eyes again and went the opposite of pinching yourself to wake up in a dream. He wanted to close his eyes to what the dream had been, wake up in the old life before things ended up so fucked. When he opened his eyes again, he coughed and it hurt his stomach. They all looked at him in a way that he knew meant he'd been shot and that this was not some rewind thing where it had all been a dream. Orville watched a bird land on the sill outside his window. It was a pigeon with just one foot. Or it had one foot pulled up like birds sometimes do. It was cooing. He felt a tear fall down his cheek. It was involuntary, 
like all the kind you have when you wake up, they don't have a reason. It was enough to feel the tears warmth and to see his brothers there, to know Jackie was back in their lives somehow. And then Opal walked in and real tears streamed down his face and he closed his eyes and laid his head back, feeling bad, feeling sorry like he'd done something wrong, like getting shot had been his fault. Then he remembered that he'd been dancing and that there was some other kind of dancing he'd been doing in the place he went after he got shot. There was no sense trying to make sense of it, even to himself, but there was something related to dancing there where he went, like a world where everything was a kind of dance. Or like it really had always been that way, and he just saw it then clearly in the dream. That movement itself was dance, any movement. Now, whether you put in the effort to make it beautiful was on you. Sure, you could clumsily stumble through life without any love of being moved through the world. But if you knew all of life was an opportunity to express the beauty in the place where it couldn't you? This was the question being posed by a woman's dream. And in the dream, he watched people walking in unison, and he thought they too were dancing. And he saw them stumble, and he saw them fall. He saw this as dance too, and he saw entrails carrying crumbs, and thought the same, and deer, and birds in the air, and cars on freeways, and public transportation, and tunnels, and clouds moving, and reflections of buildings. Each thing there, wherever he was, was dance. Even his fall to the ground after the shot, the stillness of his body struggling for breath, was dance. And everyone on the ground with him, everything, a grand act of being. Everyone was connected to whether they wanted to be or not. This was grand vision. His remembrance of it drained as he woke and seemed nonsensical to try to think about. After, forever after, everything danced, foolish. Soon after waking up, the idea was embarrassing. All of what had happened to him embarrassed him. He was surprised and how quick he'd gone from relief to disappointment, and surprised by the first words out of his mouth. Was she doing here, or less Luther, about Jackie? He immediately corrected himself, seeing Jackie wince at his question. Sorry, Nymph, but how are you all of a sudden here again? Why now? I came to the powwow, Jackie said. Why? I was trying to get back to Oakland to be with you guys again, Jackie said. Luther and Lonnie kept washing the dominoes to have something to do. Why now, though, Oral said. I know it should have been a long time ago. I know I never should have been gone. I'm sorry, I don't have any excuse, Oral. Okay, Oral said. And there was a silence between them all, and Lonnie and Luther stopped washing the dominoes because the sound of it was suddenly too loud. Oral said, so you guys just been playing dominoes beside me here while I've been dying? What? 